Santiago, December 1989, one day after the election of Patricio El Wynn and the first free Chilean presidential elections in 19 years. This demonstration, a call for the release of all those jailed opponents of Chile's former leader, Augusto Pinochet. For the past 18 months, more than 400 people have been held in Chilean prisons, accused or convicted of political crimes. Another 1,900 are on bail, facing trial or sentence on similar charges. But in January of this year, the prison population was cut dramatically. Many of the political prisoners were kept in this block of Santiago's main jail. For months, once doors were closed on cell number four, a team of men would set to work secretly on a dramatic escape plan. Late in January, police discovered the fruits of those labors. In all, 50 men crawled through a tunnel to freedom under the cover of darkness. Considering the heavy security that surrounded the men, the numbers involved in the escape caused consternation. One by one, they had made their way 100 meters along the tunnel to the outside world. Seven of the men were soon recaptured, but the police failed to find any trace of the others. They just disappeared into the night. And in the cool light of day, there was a certain amount of embarrassment among the prison authorities. Many of those who escaped were members of the FPMR rebels, named after a popular Chilean independence hero. The group has been committed to the violent overthrow of the Pinochet regime. The media made allusions to the great escapes from European prisoner of war camps in the 1940s, but to the government spokesman, it was no tale of daring do. Hay en los prófugos terroristas, delincuentes de alta peligrosidad. He called the fugitives dangerous delinquents and terrorists and spoke of the extremely grave situation. For its part, the FRMP held a clandestine news conference to reaffirm its military campaign. Ten years before the FRMP had begun that campaign, this man was Chile's president, Salvador Allende. His was the world's first freely elected Marxist government, but destined to be a short-lived one. With the covert support of Washington, Chile's military staged a coup. Allende, killed in the fighting, it was said, was replaced by General Pinochet. Hundreds of thousands of Allende's supporters were imprisoned, executed, or exiled. It was this systematic repression that was to spawn opposition groups like the FRMP, committed to the violent overthrow of the military dictatorship. Pinochet himself was to become the target of a violent attack. The general escaped with minor injuries, but five of his bodyguards died. The attack shook Chileans. Many saw the actions of their oppressive government encouraging such extremism. However, there were those within the opposition who felt that such attacks would hinder rather than help Chile's path back to democracy. Perhaps to encourage this division within the opposition, the authorities staged a reconstruction of the attack for the cameras. Adding to the slightly bizarre nature of the event, police and actors were joined by some of those rebels who had actually taken part in the attack and had been arrested. The president-elect, Patricio L. Wynne, has been equivocal on the question of political prisoners, despite public statements of sympathy for some of their causes, if not for their means of achieving them. Elwin has been keen to distinguish between what he calls prisoners of conscience and those convicted of crimes of blood. Many 
many Chileans are unhappy with the position taken by Elwin. He was long an opponent of Pinochet, but did not support the armed struggle. His distinction between groups of political prisoners is seen as a reflection of that. Those same Chileans, including Judge René Garcia Villegas, also have no faith in the present judicial system, which they feel is still strongly influenced in its decisions by the military. So the president-elect's offer of retrial for some political prisoners is given little credence by them, especially when there's no talk in government circles of pursuing members of the military for their past crimes. Huge rebel arms caches have been seized by the military over the last few years. However, it's claimed that one shipment remained undetected, and its whereabouts are known by one of those who took part in the great escape. Since their imprisonment, the rebels have maintained their determination to kill Pinochet. And although no longer in the presidency, the former leader is refusing to stand down from his position as commander of the military. Some 400 political prisoners remain in Chile's jails. El Wynn must not only resolve that problem, but also the threat of continued rebel violence. He must try to heal past wounds without losing control of Chile's future. <laughs>